so this is the um, the Majestic Ontario crit number four or Majestic crit number four. Uh, this is the women's three, four, five category, and I believe it's scored separate with the three separate and then the four fives. So Ellen gets a good start here. That's Darren in front of us. Darren was in that crash, um, and unfortunately, it was no fault of Darren's at all. If you see right there, there was almost another touch of wheels um, just because uh, Veronica got a good start, but she kind of let off right there in the corner because she didn't really want to be on the front, I don't think. Um, but yeah, the theme of this race is uh, something a little uncharacteristic. Uh, this race was actually pretty sketch in my opinion. When we were reviewing the film, there's a lot of potential crashes that just didn't happen. And unfortunately, Darren gets caught up in one crash that was not her fault at all. Um, but the theme of this uh, race is kind of cross-wheeling. There's a lot of cross-wheeling going on unnecessarily, in my opinion. And please note that this is just my opinion. I'm not trying to uh, say I know it all or anything like that. And I'm really just trying to help people. I'm not trying to call people out or anything of that nature. So um, with that being said, let's uh, get into some racing. And what's going on here, Ellen? Oh, real quick, uh, Tina just... Um, Excellent move. I just wanted to point this out. Ellen left a little gap here. Tina noticed it. Um, she not only closed the gap, she also noticed that Aaron left a little gap in front of her. So instead of sitting behind Ellen or sitting behind Aaron, she you know went around both gaps and closed up to the front. Yeah, my goal in this race was to kind of get a good start and stay on a wheel towards the front, which I was feeling pretty good about. At this point in the race, I was comfortable behind Aaron, but then I, I still, once something happens or I lose a little bit of focus, or if a gap opens up, I, I'm just not so decisive in making moves to grab the next wheel, so I kind of just stay where I am or let, you know, a little bit more of a gap open up, just I think from being indecisive or a little bit slow to react. Yeah, and just something to point out, um, it's not something that's necessarily dangerous, but it uh, it lends itself to poor decision making is when those gaps are open and not closed. Like I said earlier, Tina did a great job of recognizing two separate gaps and closing down to the, uh, you know, the furthest one to the, um, to the front of the Peloton. But here, if you look at rider 189 there, and I know she's far enough away from Aaron, but She's kind of cross-wheeled for almost half a lap now, and I know most people won't consider that cross-wheeling, but um, when you look at this race, if you really pay attention to how many people are cross-wheeled or half-wheeling the rider in front of them unnecessarily, um, it gets kind of scary. And <laughs> you'll see there's a bunch of times where three or four people move you know, quickly to the left or to the right trying to avoid each other, and part of that is because it's cross-wheeled. The rider that's in the front can't see the rider that's off um, in their blind spot. And then the third rider's in a blind spot. So it's very easy to get caught up like that. So, but what I was trying to say is like, so here Ellen's leaving a bike link in front of her to the SDVC rider. And that's gonna cause other people to wanna jump in there. And sometimes it's a, you know, especially going at this speed, sometimes it's a quick decision people have to make. And that can be a little scary. So what you wanna do is either close that gap or you need to fall back and give up the wheel to someone else. But when you leave that little spot in there, it, it gives the next rider a thought of, hey, I might be able to squeeze in there. And you'll see that throughout the race that people are doing that. Um, another thing I just want to point out is, you know, sometimes your momentum will carry you past the rider that you're trying to draft. But if there's two riders in front of you and you're drafting one of them, um, you see Aaron's almost doing it there. The only difference is she's not cross-wheeled. But it's okay to ride offset of the rider in front of you, and in fact, it's usually recommended. But what you'll see in this race a lot is there's two riders in front, and the third rider will come and stick their wheel, you know, eight inches in between the two riders in front. And there's never a reason to do that. You can't move up between the two riders, um, and it just makes it dangerous. Um, and we're gonna see that all day in this race. <laughs> and you're gonna see a lot of people weaving and almost hitting each other. Um, and then unfortunately, like I said earlier, uh, Darren gets caught up in a crash that wasn't her fault at all. There goes Jessica passing pretty fast and I had a thought of trying to chase her, but I didn't react and I, I think that she ends up getting this cream, heard her name called out. 
when we passed the line. So either she got the preem or they were just talking about her because she's, you know, you know, wonderful and lots to talk about. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Jessica's wonderful. <laughs> No, so no, Jessica actually was really decisive there. And uh, so in, in motorcycle racing, there's a kind of figure of speech that we use or a phrase, and it's kind of um, slow to and fast through. And it's basically referring to any time there's a hazard or if we have to cross wheel or anything like that. So you basically want to approach the hazard slowly, but you want to spend as little time as possible in that danger zone. So it's kind of slow to, and then you accelerate through the danger zone. And Jessica did a great job. She didn't play around slowly passing people. She accelerated, went straight to the front, and then, you know, picked up the pace and makes it hot right here. And I believe she does get the cream, if I'm not mistaken. And here I was behind Carolyn for a little bit, but I've left a gap open. And mm -hmm. congratulations to her after getting a PR on Montrose on Saturday. She comes out and, and gets third here in the race. So she did a, a great job. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Carolyn, I was trying to convince her to do the open race this weekend. And I wasn't really convincing her. I just didn't know um, if she ever thought about just trying it. Um, I know Holly um, Breck has mentioned it to us before. And she's asked me sometimes, like, which race our girls are doing, if they're doing the uh, open or the women's. And, you know, she was one that kind of suggested also before, like, you know, they should try the women's, I mean, uh, the open sometime, especially since uh, Carolyn's really good at like Montrose and a lot, of, a lot of other group rides where she's comfortable carrying a fast pace and often it's a little easier. Our, our races are pretty hard, don't get me wrong. Um, they're fast and they're fast like the whole time. I can't sit in the wind or come off the back like Ellen's doing here and then catch back up. But um, sometimes if, when you sit in the draft, it's, it's a lot smoother and it's um, sometimes pretty easy to hold on to. And I think a lot of the women in this race will do five in a fine. Um, but at the same time, if you're nervous or scared, then yeah, I would say don't jump in because we have three times as many riders in there and, you know, it's heavier guys going a lot faster. So, yeah, you have to definitely have some confidence and be comfortable with riding close to people. Yeah, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little easier when someone a lot smaller than you bumps into you, but you're one of the, you know, smaller people getting being out there with, with a lot of other people a little yeah. less comfortable. And I, you know, um, I love Samantha's socks right here. Um, hopefully she's not offended, but I, it reminds me of Wonder Woman when I see her socks. So she has those nice uh, socks with the kind of stripes on them and it just reminds me of like Wonder Woman boots. So, you know, Samantha, I love the socks. Please don't be offended by the Wonder Woman comment, but. <laughs> Yeah, so we kind of got off theme a little bit, and you know, I don't want to be negative anyway, so, um, but I do want you guys just to kind of watch the race um, and just pay attention to how many people are sticking their wheel in a place where it doesn't belong. I mean, if you look at it right there, the lady in the black and gold has her wheel cross wheeling two people right there. You either need to move up or you need to fall back, one of the two. And she did, she moves up now, but she had her wheel cross wheeled for probably about four seconds. And I know four seconds may not seem like a lot, but as soon as that rider moves left or right in front of you, because they do not know you're there, uh, hopefully you know how to uh, bounce. <laughs> hopefully you know how to do the bump drill and you know, bounce off of the, that contact. So. And as you can tell now, there's a lot of, um, I don't know if four lines are the right word, but there's a lot of uh, mid-turn adjustments in the lines, and on, on the turns, I'm sorry. And if that is the case, you definitely don't want to be half wheeling someone. Um, you know, if the Peloton's a little bigger, kind of like ours, we're three, four, five, you know, six wide sometime, yeah, you're going to see a little cross wheel, but it's a little safer because there's a rider to the left of you and to the right of you. So no one's going to make a left or right movement. But when you're only two wide, like you guys here, sometimes three wide, that one of the riders may feel they can move left or right. And if they don't know your wheel is six inches across their wheel, there's going to be a problem. So here you run a little wide, Ellen, and I would just say, um, same thing, you just got to close this gap here, be a little closer. You guys do have the pace pretty hot. I don't know if it's another preem or not. And there's Summer right there in front of you. Um, shout out to Summer. She let us use some of her film. Um, from her YouTube channel. She just launched a new YouTube channel and it's uh, 
two wheels and a girl so again shout out to summer and hopefully we can have her on our channel as a guest writer and uh maybe do a break film breakdown with us yeah i found myself i wanted to find a way to move up but i was just kind of indecisive so i was just out in the wind a lot contemplating trying to go up maybe the outside trying to see who i could follow because i really wanted to be in the top you know five to ten riders because i it typically is a little bit less surging but despite how i started up in the the front i you know still don't know how to stay it stay in the front yeah it's just really um you just really have to be diligent you have to be committed to not only holding a wheel but you have to be committed to not shuffle back like and it's very easy to get shuffled back and you lose a little focus you might be in sixth seventh place next thing you know you're in 12th place and if you don't make an effort to you know shuffle back up to the front you never want to shuffle back more than a place or two and then you need to regain it on the next corner or the next couple corners especially when the when you know it's a premium lap unfortunately even if you're not going with uh, going for the cream, you do have to pick up the pace just to be able to hold on to the, the front group. Yeah, so that was my whole, you know, kind of thought process and what I w needed to do. But again, just I, not having the commitment to really doing it or being decisive. And here you just took like a little bit of wide line. People came underneath you. And now, you know, you've lost momentum and you've got to pick up the pace again. And, you know, this section of the road, I really hate it. You can see how it's <laughs> bouncing. Even with the GoPro stabilization, it still uh, has a lot of chatter on the camera. So, yeah, I just don't like that section of the road. But I wish they put cones around it and we'd have to go around the outside during <laughs> the race. Make it a little difficult. That would make it a little more difficult, but, yeah. You just, know someone's hitting that cone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, but I was thinking of like pulling off the entire first lane there, but it would narrow the circuit a lot and then everybody would have to take a wide line. So, yeah, that's not really practical. So, yeah, I mean, again, hate to beat a dead horse, but if you pay attention, I, um, yeah, there's still like a lot of crosswheeling unnecessarily here and there. And for some reason, there's a lot of floaters in this race. There's a lot of people just riding off to the side by themselves. <laughs> Ellen's one of them. <laughs> She's kind of famous for that. Mm -hmm. But um, I like it. Yeah, I see. But no, um, also uh, Ellen had a little mishap. Um, her sister's down from Texas. So they've been switching bikes. Um, Ellen's riding like this other bike that I have as a climbing bike is one of her old tarmacs. And her sister's been riding the new tarmac, but her sister's I don't know, 5'6", and Ellen's 5'9", so they've been adjusting the seat back and forth, and on the race, for whatever reason, the seat didn't get tightened all the way, so hitting some of those bumps, Ellen's seat drops, and she's down, like, riding a BMX bike, and <laughs> it's definitely hard to keep momentum and just keep pace, and not to mention it affects your bike handling, things like that. So we see another weave there. Um, and I know, uh, I believe her name is Ariel. I believe she just moved up. But uh, again, at the time that she moved up, it, was, um, it wasn't it was assertive. She didn't get to a, a certain position. So the, per the rider on the inside has no clue she's there, runs it a little wide, then Ariel will weave to the left. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy with my seat because I've done a couple rides on it and it had seemed fine, but I think just the pace and the effort, I had not done a hard ride this whole week. So it, it really was entertaining. I I was quite amused laughing to myself several times during the race because it just it felt like a little kid spinning my legs out and riding, a, it really felt like a little BMX bike, uh, what you see. Yeah, it's very exhausting also <laughs> too, having to stand up, you know, large portion of the race for no reason just because you can't sit down or put down any power while seated um it's very difficult that you're even i mean it's kind of impressive that you're even able to hang in there and not get dropped too bad well thank you it i don't know i, I was nervous about it dropping even more because at least i could sit on it yeah but standing up i, I don't know i was then sitting down 
it made it uncomfortable to turn the corners it just was not a good feeling so bike fits you know are, are great things to have a few people approached me later and said that they were thinking man does she know her seat is so low or i think she could use a bike fit <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny it fell to the point where i almost couldn't get it out of the frame like it was jammed in there pretty good so <laughs> Yeah, uh, hopefully no damage to the bike or anything. I mean, obviously I fixed it now and all that, but yeah. So yeah, let's get back to some racing and <coughs> see what we see here. You know, I know uh, I don't know the UCLA rider. I don't know if I've seen her in the other races or not, but there was a UCLA rider and I believe one of the the bronze girls. But they, um, you know, this is just my critique. Um, I'm a fast cadence guy. I love a high cadence. But I think sometimes they're in just one gear too light, maybe. Um, not because their cadence is fast, but just because there's a lot of bouncing out of the seat. And sometimes that can come from a bike fit, your seat being uh, too high often, because you can't reach the bottom of the stroke. But I think theirs was more so just, um, you know, spinning a little bit too much and having a, a lot of bounce to it. I don't know you guys um and there's Darren there with the neon helmet again and Darren's one of the first people we met on Ellen's first race uh the UCLA road race a year ago and she did a you know a nice little um kind of b-roll for our YouTube channel for us then and um I think I called it pitch shenanigans but um yeah, it hurt my it hurt me. It hurt my heart when I found out that Darren was the one that crashed. Because at first I didn't think that was Darren. I thought it was her teammate that crashed. And when I watched the film, then I was like, oh, that was Darren that crashed. And you know, I know she's a good rider and all that kind of stuff. And then when I saw how it happened, it even hurts more when it's no fault of yours at all. And she really was just kind of stuck. Had nothing to do, uh, nothing she can do for the most part. And hopefully she's okay. Um, I don't know if anybody's talked to her or anything like that but and I didn't see her after the race so hopefully she's not injured uh, hopefully she didn't hit her head too hard or anything and doing well by now definitely yeah you, you never like to see anybody go down but it it does have a little different feeling when you have a little more personal connection yeah for sure and it's not like I know Darren well or anything it's just you know when you get into like um, a new hobby or a new sport or whatever and someone you know greets you with a, like a welcoming spirit you know it kind of sticks with you for a while so looks like the pace is getting hot here though you guys are going 26 uphill false front I know it says zero percent but I believe it's like one point something 1.5 or something like that um, often it doesn't register on my Wahoo either but of course you know it's uphill I think we averaged 23. Ooh. See, there's another one of those cross wheel moments. <laughs> um, and yeah, and almost a collision there with you. Would have been fun. Yeah, <laughs> man, yeah. Yeah, crashing on a turn at 23, yeah, I'm sure it would be delightful. Yeah, and you know what's funny is, I mean, this late in the season, and you guys' races have been really pretty good pretty safe for the most part um, I don't remember too many crashes in the women's races you know in our races we almost can guarantee one crash but yeah this race to me just it didn't have a good feeling of control here you do a pretty good job of starting to move up um, especially with a drop seat you know it's pretty good to move up you're not putting in too many watts so Pace is a little bit slower here at 22 miles per hour, and you know usually you guys are going a little faster down the stretch. But it doesn't matter if the pace slows down. Of course, that's your opportunity to move up some spots. Oh, almost another cross wheel there, or not a cross wheel, but almost a collision with someone's back wheel there. Now we see Aaron on the front setting the pace. It looks like you guys are kind of, I don't know, resting a little bit. I don't know if there a, was a preem or you're going to lead into something here, but it looks like some momentum is building a little. 
Now this is where you need to be. Get up to the front, stay up to the front. Not in the wind out here by yourself, but <laughs> but you're not putting in any watts. You guys are going pretty slow. The pace is down to 19. Carolyn picks it up right here. And then you just need to jump on that wheel there. Jump on Carolyn's wheel and, you know, ride it out. Carolyn, you know, is a good wheel to follow. She's steady. She stays at the front and she puts in a hot pace. And here's what's funny is that's Lisa Muhammad on the right up there. And she had a bike change. Um, I forgot what it was. I think it was two flats or something. And I think Carolyn thought Lisa was attacking her off the front. So she goes up to meet Lisa, but Lisa was um, coming out of the pits, if I'm not mistaken. And, and just getting her momentum up to get back into the pack. So, and for sure here, I know for sure your seat has dropped by now, because I remember, uh, you know, you can't even keep the acceleration to stay with the group here. <laughs> yeah, I think I thought Lisa was off the front too. Yeah, you guys are um, picking up the pace pretty good. Obviously, you're falling backwards. That was, um, that was weird that uh, two people ran wide right there. Um, I don't know. That looked weird a little bit to me. Uh, there was no reason for it to go that wide, but sometimes people target fix or something and not able to make the turn there. The only good thing about that low seat, you should have a good tuck position. <laughs> So what are you what are you thinking here? Like, what are your goals now that your seat is down and you're this far back? In the race? I see you're standing here, like just to try to keep up with everyone. What what are your thoughts? Well, I was thinking if I can be up there, I can sprint. <laughs> so it just is trying to get up there, but it, it I wasn't really sure. It's never happened, so I was, but it, I was just trying to. I don't know, kind of be up there, be in contention, because that seems to be my biggest problem is being there at the end. But it it really was challenging, and there's a crash. Yeah, so there's the incident. Let's try to break it down and watch it in slow motion here. So you probably, you can't see from this angle, but the SDBC rider in front of um, Darren, her teammate, cross-wheeled. And this is uh, the, the camera angle from Summer Alvarado, and that's uh, two wheels and a girl. So if you look at um, Aaron, Aaron Morton, that's in the white shirt, um, the SDBC rider, number 174, she's gonna cross wheel between Aaron and Lisa Muhammad. And Aaron and Lisa Muhammad are kind of shoulder to shoulder, and there's no way where to go really for the SDBC rider. So I'm not trying to you know call her out or anything like that, but she really shouldn't have put her wheel you know, between their two wheels. And if you see right here, once this lady passes the camera, they contact right here, and she's in between two riders cross-wheeled. And then she comes across in uh, Aaron's, I mean, Darren's front wheel. So, yeah, it's just one of those things where you can't be cross-wheeled. Um, you either need to be behind or you need to get shoulder to shoulder at some point. Yeah, it happened right in front of me and I thought there's a good chance I'm going down because a lot of times when you see that happen it takes out, you know, wipes out the whole field across and there's kind of nothing you can do sometimes but I was able to stay upright and it seems like um, Darren just fell and stayed there. I mean, she didn't go sliding which a lot of times you see so it could have been a, a lot worse. Yeah, well, I mean, luckily, um, hopefully she's okay, and obviously Darren has some decent experience riding, so hopefully some of that paid off to being able to roll and not falling too awkward on her bike. But um, we definitely got to get you back out to the Thursday crit practices. I mean, you always have enough power to catch back up to the peloton, so we got to figure out how to get you to stay in the peloton, stay up in the front third of the race and not hang around in the back back here. Yeah, and this was with a little separation with the crash. It took me, it was a lot more difficult to catch up. I think it took me almost a lap to catch back up to the group or half a lap, three quarters of a lap. And I was doing a, a pretty good effort. 
well, <laughs> when the cap threes are in there, the pace is kind of hot. You can't do, you can't afford to pick up these bad habits and think that you're always going to be able to catch back on. That's mm -hmm. that's a very good recipe to get dropped right there. Um, like I said, I can't do it in our races. If I fall back, you know, 50 yards, 100 yards from the peloton, yeah, I'm done. I, you know, there's no way I'm catching back up. Well, and some people use those opportunities of crashes to really attack because um, mm -hmm. they know that the field separates. I don't know if the people in the front knew that there had been a crash. Um, it a lot of times sounds pretty loud, but there is only a couple laps left, so it is really starting to, to pick up. Yeah, and I think that was more the case um, that it's just it's the end of the race. You know, you're getting close to the end, and the pace mm -hmm. always picks up. Everybody's When you're riding slow like this or the group is not strung out, and I don't mean slow like as an insult, I mean like whenever the group is bunched up, the pace isn't fast. I mean, it's not that hot. So whenever that happens and there's only a few laps to go, everyone starts thinking like, hey, I got a shot. So everyone gets a little fired up and, you know, thinks they have a shot to win. And, you know, that's just uh, how it is. So if the pace slows down at all, it gets a little, gets a little tense. And here's a good shot of the uh, BMX style riding. <laughs> by Ellen right there look how low her seat is her <laughs> knees are almost hitting her elbows and she has to stand a lot just to keep momentum and I, I like I said I don't know how you did it um yeah definitely got to make sure we check over the bike and everything before we get on the course not only for safety but just so you don't have any mishaps and for the record for those that don't know things like that they're not mechanicals so you do not get to go to the pit for a free lap um, because it's avoidable so any bolts or anything coming loose on your bike, those are not mechanicals. Those are um, things that those are bike maintenance issues. Um, so yeah, there's no uh, relief from those things. You just gotta tough it out. Yeah, it does look a little funny, but not as funny as it felt. I felt like I looked completely ridiculous and it just looks slightly ridiculous. Yeah, but if you can tell, even at the bottom of your stroke, like your knee is still bent pretty good, you know? <laughs> so, and there's no acceleration, there's no power, you know, you might end up pulling the hamstrings trying to ride like that, but... <laughs> they, yeah. they were hurting pretty good the next day. Yeah. And look at now, like, your hips compared to Carolyn's hips <laughs> now. <laughs> Her hip is now, like, <laughs> in your ribs, <laughs> you know, and you guys are pretty close to the same size. Yeah, so, that is funny. Yeah, no, you can tell there's a big difference there, so. BMX rider. You're in pretty good position here though coming into the last two laps. Just like I said, I know it's tough to accelerate and stuff like that. And you guys are doing some heavy walks. I looked at your power and Summer's power. And you got you know, it's off and on. You guys are doing some pretty heavy walks. And if you see in front again, there's one of those little weavy cross wheelie motions where there's three riders riding staggered and almost hit each other again. Again, whenever you're cross wheel, the person does not know you're there. It, you know, we all like to kind of blame the person that moves over or that hits our front wheel, but it's your responsibility to guard your front wheel. And if you're behind the person, it's just like driving a car, you're in their blind spot. They can't see you. So, you know, they move left, they move right, and they have no clue that your wheel is, you know, overlapping theirs. Are you saying we need mirrors on the bike to definitely not? See, no, see definitely in our not. <laughs> you need to not cross yeah. wheel. That's what you need to do. You need to protect your front wheel at all costs. And again, I'm not even just referring to the crash. It's just it happened so often in this race. I'm surprised there weren't more crashes. Even though there are a lot of near misses. You guys carry good speed down that back straight though. 28 miles per hour is pretty good. You know, like in our race, we're doing 31, 30, stuff like that. So, yeah, but, but half the time we're only doing 26. So you guys carry 28 pretty easily right there. And I'm sure the front was probably over 30. Yeah, here it's just so spread out and I'm 
working so hard to <laughs> just try to maintain. Yeah, jump on that wheel right there. You have like a lead out for like whatever place you guys are in, <laughs> trying to catch back up to the Peloton. Again, you guys are carrying good speed. This is up the false front here. You guys are carrying about 25. And I think there's the other LeGrand girl in the yellow shorts, I mean yellow shoes that I was talking about that had a really fast cadence earlier with a little bounce to it, but it looks like she's smoothed it out now and it's like, you know, using a little bit more power. Even though she still carries a fast cadence, which I love, it's hard to teach people to carry a faster cadence. Um, you can always slow down, but you can't always speed up. Speeding up your cadence needs to be trained. They both actually need to be trained, but the difference is everyone can slow down, but sometimes people can't produce power at a slow cadence. What are you thinking here with uh, coming into this last couple straights? I'm just thinking I'm not in the position that I need to be in. It's definitely not far enough, but I'm just going to sprint for whatever I can, and here Lisa is. In, in a little bit and has a problem with her bike again and we're gonna go yeah. around well that's the uh set, that's her bike that she changed to and i think what happened was her other bike is di2 this bike was mechanical she wasn't used to riding mechanical gears and it got stuck in the small ring and she couldn't get it back up to the big ring so that obviously she's not gonna out sprint you guys or anything in, a, in the small ring here it's a good hard effort you put in. I mean, you didn't hit high watts, but you've been sprinting for a long time. So still holding 500 watts after like 30, 40 seconds. Yeah, that's impressive. Well, it was easy to stand up. So thanks right. for tuning in.